Hello, everybody, and welcome to Stargate the Cosmos. Uh, I'm your host, Janet Leslie, and my co-host, Dr. Sasha Alex Leslie, and we're on radio. Our producer is Tom Respect. Uh, we're on Studio B, and our guest today is Nikki Yankee. Let me tell you a little bit about her before I bring on Dr. Lesson and Nikki. Nikki says, I'm a lifelong experiencer of the paranormal, which includes interactions with ghosts, aliens, angels, and just about everything in between. I went through my childhood in a very strict, fear-based religious household, and I was told the spirits I was seeing were demons or that I had too big of an imagination. So I grew up with I tried to ignore the spirits, entities, aliens, and make excuses for what I was seeing, hearing, and dreaming, but they just kept coming. Going into adulthood, I could no longer ignore them. I decided to accept them as part of my life, but rarely spoke of them to friends and family for fear they would think I was crazy. Although I could see and hear them, I didn't realize I could communicate. In 2010, I started meditating, and my consciousness started to expand very rapidly. Very quickly, by 2014, I had started classes, and I was going to seminars to learn about, about my psychic abilities. Little by little, I released my fear and embraced my ability. It felt, it felt amazing, like a new me had been reborn. While continuing to meditate and practice in communication with the spirit world, I received an even bigger surprise. In 2017, during a hypnosis session, I discovered I was being abducted by the Greys, and I was involved in the hybrid program. And now, two years later, I continue hypnosis sessions, bringing many memories of my abductions to light. I now communicate with my lifelong great alien guardian. He has been very helpful in my understanding of what has and is happening to me. So I have a, a bio on uh, Nikki on AquarianRadio.com, plus some pictures and graphics. So feel free to go take a look at those. And uh, Dr. Lesson. Say hello, Nikki and, and Thomas. Aloha, good morning. Now it's afternoon, honey. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Maui. We're behind. <laughs> Hi, Nikki. Uh, welcome to the show. Wow, what a fascinating story. Um, well, how about we start with the with your story, your earliest recollections of. You sound like me, but I'm, I don't want to pollute my story with your story with my story. So. What's your earliest memory of having some kind of interaction with spirits, entities, aliens, or whatever you were seeing? What's um, going on? Okay. Well, it, uh, it's, it, it seems like it was always in my life, so it's kind of hard to pinpoint it down to one thing. I've always had, um, I've always been able to hear, like, voices not um not directing me to telling me what to do what not to do but just talking i've always been able to hear um i thought it was people's thoughts for a long time but um i think uh it was actually i think i kind of dip in and out of dimensions so um i've had some experiences with that pretty much my whole life um, as far as the paranormal, I remember um, seeing um, like things which I always thought were in my closet. Uh, so I guess it would be more like shadow um, type things in my closet. I'd never get a really good look at them, but I'd always be terrified. Uh, growing up, I was a Jehovah Witness. So that type of uh, like the idea of spirits being okay or good were shunned and everything was a demon so you must be doing something wrong in your life if uh, a demon was around you so i always thought there were demons and i would dream about them and just be terrified as a kid uh not knowing what was happening to me so um i tried to make a lot of excuses your closet be let me let me go back and ask you about your closet being because um so you didn't see them straight on you kind of saw them from the side or out of the corner of your eye what, what was going on there did you ever see them straight on not knowingly um 
uh, the closet type um, beings, it would either be a shadow, like not a full vision. I, I honestly now I think it might have been like ghosts or like what people would refer to ghosts, um, like uh, earthbound beings and or um, just other spirits or entities. Um, as young as I can remember, I, I always knew I wasn't from here or felt like I wasn't from here. And I would often like look up to the sky and ask them when they were coming to get me because I didn't feel like I was supposed to be here. But um, now I come to realize that there is a reason why I'm here. So, um, but I did on occasion see what seemed like a real life human in front of me. But when I would ask my family who it was, they have no, they would have no idea what I was talking about or who I was talking about. There was a very tall blonde man that came into our, uh, we didn't call it a church, but I'll, I will for religious reasons, um, came into our church and um, she talked to me. And when I brought it up later, they didn't remember or didn't know who, who I was talking about, but he was very real um, to me. So they didn't see him, but I did. So I believe that, that um things like that were happening. I just, I just assumed they just didn't get a good look at them or didn't remember. And I was pretty uh, introverted. So I didn't push um, the envelope a lot with them. So you're having full daylight uh, appearances and conversations. So when you tell this tall man, he spoke to you and you had a dialogue? Yes. He, conversation. And if I re, yeah, if I remember correctly, he uh, said something like he was coming back for me. So uh, thinking about what he looked like now, I'd almost guess he might have been a like Palladian type being or something, or just an apparition of someone I once knew. Um, nothing made sense to me growing up. I, I just had to keep um, like when something would disappear, I'd convince myself that I must have misplaced it. When it would reappear, you know, right in plain sight, I just, you know, assume um, I had missed it. I had to have missed it, you know, um, because how could that possibly happen? Uh, when I was young, I remember looking up in the sky and seeing a star and I would see it move. I could see it like jet back and forth. And I would just put that on myself, like, oh, your eyes are getting tired. Or if you stare at something long enough, you know, it'll go out of focus. So I just, I would always come up with an excuse um, so that I wouldn't be so terrified of why these things were happening. Um, but when I got a little bit older, I did have an experience with a, which now I know was a ship that came overhead. And um, I thought it was the Northern Lights because I lived in the North, in the Northern States. So I thought it was the Northern Lights. So I came home and in my parking lot, there was these big beams of white light all the way around me. And I, had, I was married, but very young at the time. And um, I looked up and was just staring at it in awe. My husband went into the apartment and what I thought was just a minute or two, he came out and was like, are you ever coming in here? He's like, you've been out here for like two hours. Oh and I'm like, goodness. what? Like that's, <laughs> you know, and, but I always thought that was the Northern Lights. It never occurred to me until a couple of years ago when I finally discovered that this was happening for real, that, oh my gosh, that was a ship. That was an actual ship that must have, you know, come down and taken me up. And I just, it never occurred to me. I just thought I was staring off into these beautiful lights. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Well, do you think they, uh, since it was two hours later, do you think they kind of blanked him? out so he didn't come out right away now as you were gone did you get any more details on, on that episode um i haven't gone back in uh hypnosis or uh in my own um 
uh, my own trying to figure out what that was. Um, I am sure that they abducted me and um, did whatever they do uh, when you're on board. Since then, I've had hypnosis in the last couple of years and um, have um, a couple of memories now, by a handful of memories now of some abductions. And then I had a, um, in real time, uh, just a year ago, um, I had to call in a paranormal team to help me because the activity was getting so great in my house. Um, and in doing so, they discovered a manted and grazed in a tunnel beneath my um, beneath my apartment. So I what? Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, your, um, so are you on the floor? I'm on the first floor, and um, some weird happenings. Well, every place I've ever lived, I've had very strange happenings, but. In this particular place, um, I was getting um, some pretty strong paranormal things happening, which I was fairly used to. Except here, it was um, it was pretty strong. So, uh, for example, I um, was doing a morning routine before work, and I was in a rush to try and get a bunch of chores done. So I had um, started a load of laundry and um, there wasn't much laundry detergent left in the, the jug. So I tipped it upside down, you know, to see if I could get one more load in that cap and set it on the shelf. And when I started my um, laundry or my washing machine, it locks, the lid locks into place, you know, so you can't open it once it starts. So I um, left the laundry room and started um, doing some other chores. A few minutes later, I heard that jug fall off the shelf. And I just thought, well, I'll go get it when I change my load. So approximately an hour later, um, I was getting ready to run to the store. And I thought, well, let me change that laundry. Uh, it put it in the dryer real quick. So when I went in there, I opened up the washing machine and the jug the laundry detergent jug was inside my washing machine, inside the last washing machine. So um, I was startled, but it didn't feel, I was pretty used to paranormal by now, by then. Um, so it didn't, I was like, oh my gosh, like it startled me, but it didn't feel bad. It didn't feel like a bad energy. So, and I was in a really big hurry. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have to deal with it later so um, yeah. I went <laughs> a, about a few weeks later I went to a friend of mine um, who does readings and she's very good and she was able to look back and see that there was indeed um, an energy here and when she was looking she started asking me did the roads in my neighborhood like start to bump up and uh, after I moved in, and I said, yeah, a month after I moved in, um, the road on both sides of my building got a big bump in it. And on the one side, it was so bad that it broke the um, sidewalk apart, and they had to redo the sidewalk. And she said, um, do you have a tree outside your bedroom window? I said, yes, I have a tree there. She said, there's a portal open. Um at that tree going into your bedroom and there's tunnels below your um they've tunneled under your apartment building and i said who tunneled under there and she said aliens like et's energies like she wasn't exactly sure but something is tunneling under there she thought it was aliens um she's not um into alien life so she hasn't studied it so she she, she couldn't tell me any names of any specific but just said that, well, it just so happened that I was getting ready to go to my first um, UFO conference um, with a friend of mine who um, persisted that we go. I didn't even want to go at the time when she talked me into it, but um, so getting ready let, let to me, go to that where do you, conference. Where is this going on? What part of the world? Where do you live? 
Um, I live right. around the Dallas area, DFW, Dallas, Dallas. Fort Worth area. Okay, and which conference were you going to? I went to Starworks in uh, Laughlin, Nevada. Okay. Okay, cool. And okay. Um, so it was last November, actually. And uh, so in preparation to go to the conference, I felt like I didn't know anything about UFOs. So I started reading a couple of books. Well, in doing so, I discovered that just about every, not every experience, but a lot of the experience that these people were having, I have had. So um, I had had like the owl experience where a big white uh -huh. owl had just appeared out of nowhere. I had had it with um, some other um, beings, I guess. Um, I had a lot of bloody noses during the night. I had, um, what were the other things? Um, there were several things, but um, I don't have it sitting in front of me to recall. Um, the kind of common things. I'd had a lot of dreams that um, seem to be uh, the same type of dreams that most people that are abducted have. Um, very lucid mm -hmm. dreams. Um, I was terrified of the things that were in my closet. I was terrified of um, aliens, graves. And um, wow. when I started doing these readings, I remembered like how I forget these things, I don't know, but you know, life gets busy and you tend to put things aside and forget about them, I guess. But I had done my first hypnosis the year before that. In that hypnosis, I had an actual um, paralysis during hypnosis and I couldn't move. I couldn't talk, speak, move. Um, I could hear, then that was the only thing I could do. And the uh, uh, hip a hypnotist kept asking me to move my finger when I reached this door right in the in the hallway in this door and I couldn't I couldn't move and it took several minutes before I finally was able to speak and I said they took me and she said who took you and I said they look like the grays and she said what do they want with you and I said I think they're studying me they won't let me move so I tried to figure out what they were saying um, and I couldn't figure out what they were talking about. So I assumed that they, um, were studying me and she wasn't very experienced and didn't know anything about it. That's not what I was being hypnotized or, you know, I was doing a past life regression and that was a total surprise. So right before the conference, realizing I had had this experience. I was like, oh my gosh, I think I'm being abducted, right? right. So um, I got connected with some people at the conference, um, going and telling, uh, you know, some of my stories, some of my paranormal experiences, and um, was able to do a little bit more hypnosis with some other people and um, discovered, I did some work with Barbara Lamb, she's very wonderful, and Misha, um, very, very yeah, lovely people. I even did some work with Karen Grisham. And um, so, yeah, it all worked out good. I got, yeah, yeah, they're all very, very wonderful, good people, and uh, were very helpful to me, very helpful to me. So, um, um, from there, I uh, just kind of dug into it. So when I got home from the conference, um, I had another experience with some paranormal. Um, and I decided to call a team that was recommended to me by Lori and Fenton. And uh, oh, so... Wow. Yeah, so uh, I had talked to everyone when I was there. <laughs> I got, got all my information. <laughs> um, so uh, she what hooked me up with this do? team. Pardon me? What does the team do? What did they do? They're they, I had to fill out um, some. Yeah, well, they came in astrally. 
So um, I had to fill out some paperwork so they knew what they were dealing with. Well, I, I have so many experiences that it was like hours later and they're like, it's okay, we've got enough. <laughs> Just uh, let us come in and look. So I gave them my address and three of them went astral and they kind of like direct their energy at my address. And um, I think sometimes some of them have to use um, maybe like Google Maps or something, but others just can concentrate on it and just do it. So when they come in, they can literally, like they can see each other. They can see everything that's here. Um, it's like, um, um, well, you know what astral is. Uh, so when they got here, um, you know, they asked me, who was all here, so, so it was my son and I, and I had two dogs. Um, they saw the energy that was in my house, and they called it a trickster energy, just kind of a spirit that likes to play games and move things around, and it wasn't malevolent necessarily, just kind of a nuisance, um, getting in, you know, kind of freaking me out a little bit by the way it acted. Um, they saw a troll here, a troll energy. And um, when they were searching the building to make sure there was nothing else around, they discovered the tunnels themselves. They saw the portal that the woman a month or so before had seen, and they don't know each other in any sort of way. So they saw the portal open, they saw the tunnels below me, and when they went into the tunnels, they were met with a mantid in full, um, full. Uh, I would call it like armor, like it was guarding. Um, not sure if it was guarding me uh -huh. or not, you but I believe so. About the, the portals that, or the tunnels that the other person had mentioned. You didn't say anything to them about that, or did yes, you? Yes, both of them, both of them. The, um, person I went to just to see what was going on. Um, it was about a month before I even went to the UFO conference. So this is the US or the paranormal team that came in was about two months later after the original person told me there were tunnels and a portal open. Um, so when this But did you, you tell uh, person group B what group what person A said? Did you no, 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 I have never mentioned anything. No. Okay. Okay, that's why it's just... Yeah, uh, I wanted yeah, okay, cool. to get... I never repeat what somebody else says because I want to get solid information. If I can get confirmation, if they both say the same thing, then I know we're really dealing with something. And they both said the exact same thing. So it was as good a confirmation as I could ever get. And uh, so this team, um, they did something that I wish they wouldn't have, but they didn't ask my permission. And at the time, this team ended up collapsing the tunnel, thinking I was in danger. So when they collapsed oh. the tunnel, oh. yeah, they um, killed the mantid and the sheep said three, I think she said three, it's three or five, I don't remember now, grays came running out um, of part of the tunnel that was behind. So they kind of got into somewhat of a little bit of a battle there, um, clearly. Um, she didn't say that they killed the grays. I don't know if the grays just retreated or not, um, but they were in a, quite a bit of shock. Um, so after they did, they thought they closed the portal. They thought they <laughs> did everything they were supposed to do and um, tidied up my apartment energy-wise and left. Well, uh, it was, I think, just one day later, I came home from work and um, there was, I had a rope hanging down from a doorway that I would do like some kickboxing. So I'd punch at it, you know, uh, to uh, practice kickboxing, and um, the rope hung about six inches off the floor, maybe a foot off the floor, um, attached to a bar going across the doorway, and I had gone in and out of 
that room, passing that rope. And the last time I went through the doorway, the rope hit me in the shoulder. And I looked up thinking like, how did, you know, like what is going on? That shouldn't touch my shoulder, should touch my knee maybe. And um, it had been wrapped three times around the bar. So although they thought they got everything out of here, something made its way back in. And um, so they, I had to call them back in because at that point I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what is happening here, you know? So um, I have a couple of um, questions on this. Let, let me pause right here with this. I have a couple of questions on this. From my okay. understanding, most of the most of the ET races are are telepathic, and, and they can often see someone coming astrally, you know, interdimensionally. Um, and they sense them because they are extremely uh, psychic and telepathic. So I'm I'm surprised that they were able to catch them up off guard and collapse the tunnel and they weren't able to or they killed the mantis i'm just surprised it's just but you know i don't know everything but i'm just saying that this just seems like she could have she would have known what they were going to do <laughs> you know and not yeah um, you yeah i um maybe they never thought they'd be discovered in the tunnel um i think it was yeah. uh when she was going astral, she was going through the hallways, and I think she kind of accidentally discovered the tunnels. So uh, possibly they never thought they'd be seen in the tunnel. I think they'd been working yeah. in there for quite some time. Um, it's hard to say, I'd, and I wasn't watching what they were doing, so I, I, yeah. I didn't know. Um, but what did happen is the next day after they collapsed the tunnels, there were, uh, I would say, at about six ATT trucks around my block. I never saw anyone working in the building or anywhere around, but there were tons of trucks. It was just surprising because I'm like, why is there so many AT&T trucks here? So I have a guess that um, somebody was digging out the tunnels. <laughs> Um, uh -huh. That that they used, yeah, and the then yeah, yeah, they yep, exactly. And then um, the man that was in charge of that paranormal team had a he lives in the mountains um, with like a mile long driveway all to himself. Like nobody comes down that driveway. It's very secluded, very hidden. Um, he's very much a um like out you know out by himself kind of hermit type guy and right. um a black suv pulled on his driveway the day after my um encounter with them collapsing the tunnels and the mantid and the grave so i believe that with the atat trucks as well that it may have been um, my lab um, experience as well. I had some feelings about that with seeing some people in black SUVs kind of parked around my apartment through the years. Um, I, you know, had seen a lot of that helicopter, black helicopter around a lot. But again, I was so used to like, Switching things away in my mind, like it can't possibly be about me. Must be something else going on that I never put too much thought into it until they said that black SUV pulled up in their driveway. And then I started, okay, let's recall all these experiences that I've had that um, actually resemble what is happening now. So when I put it all together, there were just so many things that had happened that I had just uh, not wanting to, I guess not wanting to deal with and realize, but um, at that point, well, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have them to. All. It's good to list them all for your future book. And then if you go into another hypnosis session, you could say, I know, you know, I want to go to this and see if there's more. Sasha, Dr. Lesson, you've been quiet. What would you like to add to the conversation? Thank you questions uh, feedback. not about what we've done so far i mean my, my attention was caught by by your guide 
and your relationship with your guide, uh, uh, your guardian. That's that's like. Oh, we haven't got there yet. Well, that's, oh, sure. That's yeah. Wrong part. I just okay. Think that's just, just keep going with your episodes and then we'll get to that. Um, so what else do you want to say about this episode? And then we'll, we'll make a note about getting to your guide. Okay, go ahead. Um, well, the guide actually falls into play right about that time. So I didn't realize okay. I had that guide. His name is Niall, or, you know, so we think. <laughs> it's the best we can come up with anyway. Um, Niall or something like that. But um, he uh, ended up communicating with the paranormal team, telling them, no, 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 no. Like, you, you've got it all wrong. <laughs> like, they're, they're not bad. They're not, like, um, out to get her. Um, she's, they, he told um, one of the paranormal team members that um, he was my guardian and I was part of the hybrid program and that they weren't to interfere because I was level three. And she assumed I might know what that was or somebody would, but um, at that point we had no idea what level three meant. So um, we ended up, uh, I asked her uh, some more questions about him and went, I ended up doing a hypnosis and communicating with him. And so what, um, he, what is level three? It, so well, you, you, level who, who three. Your, the therapist? So, that, le, so I Alicia? went to Barbara Lamb, I believe Bar was okay. the one. Yeah. No, 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 no. I take it back. I take it back. I asked, um, oh, I'm, I can't remember now. Cause I did, I ended up working with a couple different hypnosis, oh, um, okay. or hypnotists. It might have been Misha. It wasn't Barbara Lamb because um, it came up. Barbara is curious to know about it. So I know it wasn't with her, but it came up after. And then I also asked the original um, woman that had first seen the tunnels and first seen the uh, uh, um, I'm losing my thoughts here. The outside my window not the vortex, but the, um, help me out. <laughs> For well, the, anyway, the, so, you know, uh, li listen, uh, if you could uh, do a thought experiment, if you were to admit that you uh, were the, the actual tunnel itself and as the tunnel, uh, uh, what do you say? What is your essence? What, what, what information do you have about yourself that you would like to uh, share with Nikki? Well, at the tunnel we did, well, let me start with the level three. The level three we discovered is part of the hybrid program. Um, everybody comes in, everyone that's in the program is level one. Uh, maybe about half of the people um, that they're running DNA tests on and doing experiments on make it to level two. And then depending on your energy, maybe who you are, where you came from, your experiences that you've had, a uh, very few people make it to level three. And he, Niall, my guardian, was saying, I'm level three, please leave her alone because um, she is being guarded. So it turned out I was being guarded. There was also a reptilian portal open um, near my apartment. And I think that's why I was having the man to guard me because um, they were keeping other beings away. So um, during... So were the reptilians negative? Because I've met both negative and positive reptilians. Were these reptilians negative? Um, I don't, I honestly can't say if they're negative or positive, but they were interfering with what the hybrid program was trying to do. So regardless okay. of their, in, their uh, energy, 
they were getting in the way. So uh, they did not want them interfering. So um, and what's the hybrid program trying to do that? What's the hybrid program doing that they're uh, uh, that they're interfering with? Uh, the I am not 100% sure. The hybrid program, to the best of my knowledge, is taking my memories that I've had, not just in this lifetime, but in all my soul life. And I don't think they wanted the reptilians to get that information. It's about consciousness. It's about um, other parts of the universe, knowing the universe, learning the universe. And um, like the, some of the books that have been written um, that they write in code and secret, uh, they don't want everyone to understand it. They only want select few to understand it. My understanding of it is I have a contract with the grave so that I can have a human body and be here and do things that I need to do. And they have access to my consciousness, to understanding my consciousness. And that's in my um, astrology chart. Um, so so, it so shows, what is it about you and, and your rebirth that makes you get up to level three? What, 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 what is it about your experiences that, that makes you three? Well, I am like everyone that comes here. I had no memories. Um, so I really didn't know for a long time uh, what, what made me special. I, I felt special in no particular way. I was a fairly good psychic. I um, had some healing abilities. But outside of that, um, I easily did astral and did some remote viewing without ever really being taught. But outside of that, um, I really didn't know. Um, but the more <laughs> does, I learn about myself, like that, yeah. um, the more I learn about myself. Those very things that are one, that, that those very things are the things that make you three. Yeah. Very possibly, right? Because, um, how did I get this abilities to begin with? So um, yeah. it looks like I have been around for a very long time and I've um, studied the universe and just an ancient soul, it looks like. It shows it in my astrology chart. It shows it in my Akashic records. And um, that seems to be pretty fitting. So I have done some work um, when I do my meditations, there has been a handful of times that I've gone to the underworld and retrieved souls. And every time I go, it's a little bit deeper, a little bit trickier, a little bit um, more intense. I didn't know what was happening when I was doing these things when I first started. Um, and I thought, oh my gosh, they have me retrieving souls. That's awesome. Like, I love it. Um, so, or the and, site. I I go to the underworld a lot too, but I go to like beautiful cities. So you're going somewhere where you're retrieving souls. Are they prisoners? Are they trapped? Yeah. Can't get so out the themselves. first, the first one I retrieved. Um, it almost seemed like a like a test to see if I could do it. I I think the first one was actually fairly easy, and uh, it was a man, and he had hung himself. And I went down and I said, oh, you're, you know, your family, they forgive you and they love you and um, you don't have to be here, you know, and um, convinced him that it was okay to move along. And I showed him a light that was in this tree above of us. And I said, just go into that tree and they'll be, and they'll be there to help you. And he walked to the tree and um, I saw the light, like just, open up and he went into the light and it was, I was like, Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Beautiful. And it was months later, I was driving to work, which, uh, this was kind of 
<laughs> scary, I guess, once I realized what was happening. I was driving and um, I felt uh, one of my guardians that um, kind of holds on to me when I go to the underworld. Um, he has a little prickly kind of feel to him and I call him Oogly and I said, oh, Oogly, what are you doing here? Like, I'm driving to work. What are you doing here right now? And um, sure enough, they had me go to the underworld. I'm not sure who was driving, but um, when I went that time, there were three sisters. And um, so it was a little bit deeper, a little bit like it was weedier. It wasn't, um, it wasn't like the first place I had gone. It seemed thicker and denser. And uh, the weeds were very tall. Like I had to kind of push these weeds around they kind of look like seaweed like really large seaweed and um i me and another spirit helped get those three sisters out then the last time i went it was so deep in that um it almost looked like these souls were inside gum like a gum bubble it was this thick sticky kind of um, uh, I don't know, it was like substance. And we had to be very fast and it was very dark and very dreary there. And we tore open the sack, I guess, or this wall of whatever it was. And they flooded out and we had to hurry up because you could feel the other energy coming after them. They knew they were escaping. And we quickly, um, sealed it back up and got them out of there. And that at that time, there must have been over 100 that we got out of there. Wow. And so I think it's these things that possibly make me a level three. Yeah, that's great. So let me let me ask a couple of questions. So so you it seems like you're going under the earth uh, down into are you, do you see yourself traveling or are you just instantly there? Is this what we might call hell, you know, in mythology? Um, but it's, yeah. It's dense. Yeah, I'm kind and of it, instantly there. I don't um, make a long journey of it. It's uh, quick for me. Um, I have had, um, I work with the archangels often, a lot, most and Christ consciousness a lot here on earth. And um, I, they have shown me how to make myself into a sphere. And you can just like, like just go really fast as a sphere and um, then like okay. open back up. So it's almost like so you're you making yourself a up, portal. You, okay, so you're, you're, you're uh, speeding up the process, yeah. So once you get there, I mean, when I was a child, I used to go through an elaborate process of walking and crawling, and then finally I would get down. It was, it was a journey <laughs> to and from. But as I got older, I was able to go, you know, just in, now I'm instantly, I go to a lot of my, my job at night is I go to these other worlds, and I, I'm not going to go to what I do. But so you have this other job you have besides this life, and that's retrieving these people that are trapped and the most of them are, are suicides or something or you don't know how they die because mm, the one person was no a suicide, i right? think they're all different the first one was all a suicide the three did. sisters i think had in self-defense murdered some people and put themselves there like just in their own thought process had put themselves there uh -huh. and the hundred or so souls i feel were stolen. Um, they all went to a ship, like a boat ship, and I, it felt to me like um, it literally might have been a boat that something grabbed a hold of when they were, it looked like a Navy type ship. Maybe it was in a war time or something, but it looked like something had taken them against their will without them knowing any better and it was just like in a horror film. Um, you could see like their faces coming out of that or like pressing into that gummy substance, like arms, legs, like, but they yeah. couldn't get out. They couldn't break free. It, that's what it looked like. It was very eerie. It was not 
a pleasant place at all. Wow. And so once you got them out, where did they go? I, uh, they went to the ship and again, a light came over them and the entire ship went into the light. I, um, always leave it up to the angels or another, um, higher up to handle that sort of situation. Whenever I've been um, in astral experiences, the angels have always been there to help me. I have um, two experiences, if we still have time, of in astral that are really beautiful. I, 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 okay, we, we will, we're, we, we're, we're coming up on... We have 10 uh, more minutes what kind of a ship was it? Was it a, a sailing ship or a, a steam ship or a modern ship? What, what was it like? It looked like... Um, it looked like uh, almost like a navy ship that you see, like sailing along the waters. A modern navy ship. Yeah, it looked. I mean, it looked a little bit older, but like maybe not today's ship, but um, maybe like forty, fifty, sixty years ago. Okay. Wow. Like during World War Two or something. Uh, yeah, very possibly. Yeah. Um, they looked, they just flooded out. I mean, I could barely even get a glimpse of a single one of them. They just flew out of there so extremely fast. And there was a couple kind of like, I was nervous. I'm like, hurry, hurry, hurry. Like, oh my gosh, we have to hurry and get you out of here. Like, I want to get all of you, but, um, I believe that I really hope that we did. I think that we got them all out. Wow, that's great. So I just leave it to the angels after that to help me. The angels have helped me immensely. I have um, some very beautiful experiences with them. I, growing up a Jehovah Witness, after we were um, put out of the religion because my parents got divorced, so that was against the religion, and they banished us basically from the religion, I um, kind of walked around not knowing, not believing, and since I've discovered um, my abilities and everything, uh, meditation and that, I, now I can see. I can see there's a creator. I can see that there's angels where once I wasn't even sure. Now I believe it more than ever. And that was without religion, unfortunately. You know, I wish religion was what it was supposed to be. But um, sometimes... It's not, uh, not that it can't what be a good thing to, for some to, people. But. Um, I, that must be an amazing thing that happened when they put you out to Coventry, when uh, the people that were your friends kicked you out. What was that like for you? Yeah, why did they kick out the children? It was the parents that did this. So they kicked um, you out as well? Yeah, yeah. I was about 11, 12 years old at that time. And... Um, they, the only uh, way that my mother really wanted to stay in the religion, it was her entire life. And she really, um, I believe she was also an abductee. So she was kind of lost herself. So she really wanted to stay in the religion. And um, she just really did not want to be married to my father anymore um, or her husband. Uh, so uh, the only way she she was allowed to stay as if she stayed married to him. So she chose oh. not to. And in doing so, um, we all were cast out because we were a part of her family. And the ironic thing about that religion is that they isolate you so much. Uh, anyone outside of the religion is considered worldly and evil. And everything is demons. And then the one time you have a little bit of trouble in your life, they turn their backs on you. I'm like, well, isn't that ironic? <laughs> Everyone's worldly, yet yeah. you're just turning us to the wolves, you know? That's amazing. Wow. Okay, we have about six minutes before the break. Do you have any questions, Sash? Well, I just wonder what, as an 11-year-old person, what that did to you. 
Um, well, I have always been, it's, I don't know how to explain it. Um, as an 11 year old, I was more upset that my uh, family was falling apart other than um, the religion was kind of a side yeah. note, I guess, at the time. But um, I kind of got a little bit angry at the religion um, because I had uh -huh. family members of two aunts and family that were still involved in it and now they weren't even allowed to talk to us so while we were in the religion we couldn't talk to the rest of our family we could only talk to them and now that we weren't in the religion we couldn't talk to them and we're left with this family that we had disowned so oh it my was, gosh and so basically we had no one we had zero I, we basically didn't have any friends because we weren't allowed to be friends with anyone. And then everything was taken away. So it was very um, alone. I felt very alone, very isolated. Um, and then my family was breaking apart on top of it. So uh, did it you live with your mom or your experience. dad after that? Who, and then, so, um, then you had to, who did you live with? I lived with my mom. My sister went with my dad. And about a year later, my mom could not take it anymore. Um, and she ended up leaving and uh, left me with my dad. So uh, oh. the, it, was, it was a difficult time. And I was really hurt and uh, confused at how that could possibly happen. Because in my mind, uh -huh. always from the beginning, love should conquer all so you never love should fix everything and in this world it's just not that way <laughs> in this world uh you have to figure out how to either be persistent and never give up on it or uh you know your ways around of figuring out how to or who to love and who to just be okay with and things like that so it was did uh, your mother keep it she, did she keep she in, contact in contact with you? Or? Yes, yes. She moved uh, a state away and stayed in contact and always said that you're going to come live with me soon. But um, unfortunately, that didn't work out. Uh, and, and our relationship was very um, damaged then. So we never really recovered from that episode, unfortunately. And uh, she died very suddenly of brain cancer five years ago. So um, it was unfortunate. But the good thing is I can see spirit. <laughs> and she came to me in a dream and hugged me very tightly. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I love you so much. I'm so sorry for the, what happened in our life. And she just smiled and went on. And uh, just a few months ago, my stepmom, my, my first stepmom, um, passed away. And she came to me the exact same way in a dream. And I got to hug her as well. And I said, oh, my gosh, I've always loved you. I hope you know that I always thought you were a really good person. And, and she smiled and walked away. So I'm like, I'm so grateful that I'm able to communicate and understand that because it made all the difference in the world. It made all the difference to me. It made everything okay again. Yeah. Thank you. I had that too. I think you have to be open to it. If you're, if you're afraid of it, then they can't come. I have one question. We're going to be on a break in like two minutes here. I want to go back to maybe after the break. You said that you're, you think your mother was an abductee. So, um, Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. So how do you know yes, that again? Um, it usually uh, it usually stays in families, so it usually goes from one generation to the next. Um, I'm a pretty pretty good at seeing um, past lives and other people's lives. I'm pretty good in astral and uh, again, like I do some remote viewing, um, kind of practicing that a little bit more, but. Um, I could see that uh, it came from my grandfather, and uh, he was part Native American, Irish, English, um, and that tends to be um, a nationality, DNA nationality, 
that they like. And her, my grandfather and I are all O negative. And, and that too is something they tend to like. Um, the O negative or the RH negatives just come from a certain place in the stars. They come uh, from a uh, very, it tells, it tells your history, right? Your, your part of okay, your. Okay, we have to take a break right now, so pause and hold that thought. We're going to see where they come from. Be back in five minutes. Aloha and, and welcome back and to Stargates and Cosmos. And I'm host Danny here with my co host, Dr. Sasha Alex Leslie, producer Thomas Becker, and this is Reverend's Radio Studio B. And we're here with Nikki Yankee. And I wanted to tell you our donation button is down. So we, we if you would like to make a donation, we would really appreciate it. And you need to go to Revolution.radio and scroll that down to the bottom. Oh, well, I forgot the name of the person. Um, there's a name and an address, so you can mail the check there. Thomas knows it. Thomas, what's the name of the person again? Brady. Thank you, Terry, for taking the donations for Revolution Media. We appreciate you. And thank you very much for taking time, especially during this holiday season, taking your time to donate to us. That's our Christmas present, our holiday season present. So thank you so much. Okay, Dr. Lesson, what would you like to say? And then I have a couple Okay, well, the first, I would just say, you know, before our show, there was an advertisement for Extendivite. And I've been studying herbalists lately, and and the herbalists have cures for so many things that the, the medical uh, profession strings people out on. That uh, the medical profession is is uh, down on herbalists, but there's really something to li- learn from herbalists. So that's just a little side about our, our sponsor. I'm really grateful for uh, Extendivite. Uh, 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 okay, about uh, for, for you, Nikki. I'm just uh, I'm fascinated by this idea that you say you're a you're hybrid. And uh, you look at, you know, it runs in the family. And what Susie Hansen has said is that some people have been chosen, and it sounds like you're one of them, basically, and you've got a mission and something you're supposed to be doing. And, uh, uh, and so it's, if, if, if that ring resonates with you, I'd like to hear about your mission. What, what, what did you learn about what you're supposed to be doing? And before we get back to Nikki, I wanted to say a couple things about that as well. Yes, um, my grandmother uh, sat down and told us about her abduction experiences um so it does run in family so uh, this is third generation um i'm o negative my sister's o negative so that now i have the uh, irish and english but i'm scotch dutch and french as well no native american so i have heard that native american irish english connection but it's not 100 percent because i i'm a lifelong experience i have many things similar to what's been going on with you and, uh, yeah, we did mention before the break that if you really want to talk to your relatives, you got to learn how to be open to it, especially contact as well. Uh, Whitley Stryber was explaining how he trained himself so he wouldn't get into a, a basic fight or flight fear response. And now he can sit down and meditate with them. Somehow, oh, I'm, you know, not afraid anymore. They come and they, they can sit down next to me and I'm fine with that now, too. I don't know how I got there. It's just like a, a lifelong practice, but you can get there. So invite contact and then be prepared because they're contacting millions of us right now. So, Nikki, where do you want to go? I didn't mark uh, where we were. Like, well, I, I can. Um, you were about. Oh, it's fine. I'd like to um, add a comment uh, and then uh, maybe answer Sasha's question. Um, yes. So, uh, f- first of all, I want um, everyone to know that you don't have to be of that DNA background. You don't have to be uh, O negative, and you don't even have to be RH negative to be abducted. Um, I think they 
I think, I, I can't remember who it was, but they think about one in 50 people are abducted, but it's probably more like a one-time thing or maybe a couple time thing. Um, the hybrid program is separate from that, but um, there's plethora of abductions out there. So um, it's not specific to that, but I think for, as far as the hybrid program goes, that seems to be kind of a common um, denominator there. But uh, uh, what Sasha was uh, asking about, I, I, ha I think like most of us here, we all are here, uh, or most of us anyway, for a specific reason, especially at this time. Um, it's the time of uh, Aquarius everything is changing um, quite rapidly and I think everyone can see it. If you can't, you're just in complete denial. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so uh, we, um, sometimes it's a little difficult to figure out why we're here, but I've always felt like there was some testing being done with me and I've always said automatically said I'm here to save souls I'm here to save souls which is pretty broad um, of a comment actually because in doing so I save souls in all sorts of different ways and most of us in this business do as I'm sure you and Janet do as well because um, some of us are going to the underworld some of us are going um, to our neighbor and saying, hey, I love you, like, hang in there, yeah. like, you can do this. Yeah. And that's literally saving the soul. So it doesn't, right yeah, it doesn't always mean you have to do this um, extremely heroic thing to do it. But basically, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to save souls. Whether it's 10 or a thousand or a million, it doesn't matter. The 10 are just as important as the million. So um, basically that's it, that's it. But I needed a body to be here and do it at this time. This time being, um, we need some very strong, powerful energies on earth, even if it's just to raise the vibration, to get the more positive energy going to fight against the dark entities that are here trying to take over. Um, it's a crucial time in Earth's history. And um, so sometimes it's just a matter of being your here. Hybrid, uh, I'm sorry, let me, let me ask you about your hybrid state. Now, I find some people are, their DNA is uh, it's a bunch of different species or one other species besides human. So the body is a hybrid and then the soul can be a hybrid. So what DNA is in your body? Mine is, I'm Anunnaki and human, and, and there could be other things. Uh, I've interacted with all the species, which um, has strong connection to mantis, and I've communicated with grays and rept reptoids uh, primarily. But your body, what DNA do you have? What other species DNA do you have in your body? My body is, it has gray, reptilian, and mantid. Um, I think it's what what they're telling me is like a three 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 split. So uh, some combination from what um, I can get from my guardian and uh, other spirits or entities that want to communicate with me. Um, I I do a lot of work with the mantids. Um, I help them communicate with others when they can't. Um, I'm not even sure how I'm doing it. Um, I know it's happening. It's happening in my unconscious and I'm being told about it after the fact. So, um, I can't really comment a whole lot about that because I really don't know what's happening unless they decide they want to share with me. Um, I, ha I don't have those memories right now. I just know it is happening, but, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a real interesting you could even right now on the spot if you would choose to identify with each of those start with the mantis part of you if the mantis part of you were going to uh, come into your consciousness now and state its existence say what it is like 
what its essences are. What is what mantis part of uh, Nikki? Uh, what do you like? Is the mantis part of her? Uh, what do I feel like is the mantis part of? Yeah, what, what, exactly. Yes, exactly. Um, well, I feel like um, that outer shell of protection. You know what I mean? Like kind of being the um, the protected but uh, quiet person, right? You're kind of in the background, but you're taking in everything that's there with this outer shell of protection. Like I don't necessarily feel afraid anymore, um, but uh, I've got my armor and I'm kind of kind of good with that. You know what I mean? Um, wow, so, far out, yeah. It makes so, you, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, and I really hadn't ever thought about it before. <laughs> so um, I just kind of accepted it for what it was. Um, I When I talked to Niall, the guardian, the gray guardian, uh-huh. he always refers to the contract. No matter what you say, like, why is this? Why is this? He points to that contract. You signed a contract. You signed a contract. So they're very adamant about what they're doing. So um, it, to me, it looks kind of unethical, right? It's something that um, we shouldn't allow, but we signed a contract for it to happen. I mean, they do. They harvest our eggs. They harvest our sperm. They create beings and ex- experiment on them. It's it's not a pretty thought. It's not without pain and suffering for a lot of people. A lot of people really struggle with um, losing their babies to them. They feel very connected and very um, loved. I mean, I, I, I'm in uh, one of a group where, you know, people can talk openly about their experiences and their feelings on it. And there's even men that will break down and cry because they have memories of holding their hybrid babies that aren't here with them. And um, I think that's why the gray guardian refers to that contract. Like you sign this, like we need this as a race, they need this. And it's the only way they feel like they can get it. And, um, so unfortunately, it has to be that way. I've accepted it for what it is. So um, it doesn't bother me near as much as I think it bothers a lot of other people. And I what I does the contract it, say? What's the um, contract? They will only show me the con the part of the contract that's with them, and it's the agreement that I had. They uh, arranged a body for me in exchange for um, experimenting on my body, um, taking what they needed, and also getting my um, memories, my uh, memories of around the universe, of my soul life, and um, trying to understand my uh, consciousness and my higher consciousness. They don't, from what I know and from what I can see, they don't have that consciousness, but they want it because from the way I understand it, like your heart, love, emotion, that's a huge ruler of our bodies. They don't have that. They're not ruled by emotion and we are. So they want that. They're trying to create this being that they're still a part of, a big part of where they can have those experiences. It's important. Love, the emotions are extremely important, and they they want that for their race to survive. They have to have humans hold the hybrid babies. Even if it's 90% gray and 10% human, the human has to show that hybrid baby love at least once for it to survive. Otherwise, it won't survive. So they bring... did Did you nurse any of the babies? Did you nurse them? I don't have those memories. I know they have my hybrids 
because I've had some empty pregnancies, um, meaning I've been pregnant and then miscarried. And when I miscarried, there was nothing there. And um, wow. I don't want to share my family's things, but it, it's happened, not just to me. So um, I know that they have. Did they ever love by you? Like they, they told me that they wanted me to diversify. They can actually retrieve the material, either uh, the sperm uh, and the egg. They can get things from your, you know. <laughs> love life. Yeah, from your life, love life. I don't want to get a graphic here on the show. But, <laughs> um, so they, they encouraged me. I, I, I stopped and asked, I go, why? And I was, I was pretty young and I was starting to have a lot of sex. And I go, what am I doing? I don't really want to do this. And they explained, they said, well, we, ha we need to diversify the material. So uh, and I said, well, you gotta slow this down. So I, so I got, one of the reasons I got married at 16, <laughs> it was like, I had a social, um, you know, reason not to be promiscuous, but I was getting, I was getting, not, not excessively, but it was like having too many partners and not comfortable about it. So it slowed me oh. down. Um, but I, I hear a lot about the love bite stuff. They, you find yourself a attracted to a certain person you're there for a while and then then you break up and then you're on to somebody else love bites um i it's, i i did not connect that with them i didn't realize that was a thing with them and um i would say yeah that's pretty true with me because i it was hard for me to stay interested for too long with most people mm -hmm. um so yeah i would i would have to agree with that and thinking back, um, you know, I never really, I kept going to the doctor for all these really odd problems. And um, the doctors never <laughs> had an explanation. You know, I think they thought I was crazy. So I would, you know, have these huge bruises. They look like handprints often on my thighs or on my arms. And I'm like, I'm like alone. I, I don't even have a boyfriend right now or a husband. Like, how is this happening? <laughs> You know, I'm getting these bruises, and they'd look at me like, uh huh, you know, like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. You know, when I realized what they were thinking, I was like, oh my gosh, why am I here? Um, but I had a lot of stomach issues, digestional issues, a ton, a ton, ton of that. And I've heard that a lot of uh, gray hybrid um, abductees have a lot of uh, digestion problems. Um, we just uh, don't agree with the food that's here. Um, uh, oh, oh, I see. What what they told me about the why they really need uh, the you know this material. Another reason is their geneticists. It's like their their art, and that's the whole purpose of their being is to create and to diversify. It's like. It's like their air, it's like their energy. They need to create and diversify. And they do not only just humans, but they, they have a whole section that does plants and insects, and um, they have a whole you know department. That, but they love diversifying on this level. Go ahead, Sasha. You, you raised your hand. What did you oh, say? I, I have left, I have left, when you said digestive stuff, I just wondered if Niall uh, eats anything when he sees you uh, that you have in your house or that you get for him. Oh yeah, we heard that they. Some of them like to eat. They can eat. Can your gray visitor eat? Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that, and you know, um, I'm definitely going to agree with that because, uh, oh gosh, this was uh, probably almost 20 years ago. I kept having that issue. So uh, I would come home from work. My children were young, very young. And um, I had a dog. And I uh, would have like a loaf of banana bread. I just remember like three specific things. I had a loaf of banana bread sitting on the counter. When I came home, the um, cellophane that was around it was removed. And there was not a crumb left. And I thought, how did the dog do that? Like, that's amazing. Right? <laughs> then um, there was, you know, those little tin or uh, plastic containers of those little mini donuts. I hadn't uh -huh. even opened it yet. And I came home 
and that was completely empty, like licked clean, like not, And again, there wasn't a tooth mark or anything in it. And I'm like, it was on the ground, but there was no way that dog put the lid back on that and not a tooth marker and <laughs> gone into that. It was just one of those things that I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, what is happening? <laughs> but, um, yeah. yeah, I could never explain it. And I think there was a pie as well. So they must like sweets. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, 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 they sometimes get very specific, too, from some of the people we've interviewed. Yeah, the, the one likes nachos or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, I never... Good. That is, I'm so glad that you told me that because that is one mystery solved. I never knew what was happening there. You know, in that same house, this was really interesting too. Um, that same house, I, uh, when I was doing laundry, I had three different things happen. A piece of clothing appeared out of, um, I have no idea where it came from, three different times. Once was a little pair of blue hand-stitched shorts. My son was like approximately three years old at the time. They were too small for him. And they looked like they came from like um, maybe the 60s or something because they were hand stitched. They were, it was really odd. I took him to the babysitters and I'm like, here, these must be yours. And she's like, I've never seen these before. They didn't come from anyone. And then there was um, a... uh, Oh, a uh, Mickey Mouse shirt, T-shirt that showed up one time. Wasn't ours, didn't fit any of us. Um, and again, nobody we knew. It, it wasn't anyone we knew or that had been over. And then a third time was a purple tank top. And yet again, it didn't fit any of us and it didn't belong to anyone. Um, so I had never found out what was happening there that those things kept appearing in my laundry and it was always like when I was sorting laundry or folding laundry that there they were um did but you I ever do, did do, it return somebody else's clothes like somebody else's um, pajamas or your pajamas on or no, upside down or inside uh-uh. out no but uh gosh no not that I'm aware of no Um, I didn't always sleep in pajamas, so that might be part of the reason, but, um, so my experiences so far that, um, I have memories of are, um, the time when I got paralyzed and, uh, another time I was shown that I was laying on, um, what I would guess like an examining table, like it felt hard ish. Um, yeah. not like super comfortable. Um, I, I could see people on each side of me lined up. Um, I could only, I couldn't move. So I could only see maybe like their knees down and, you know, as further out they got, the less I could see. So I could see like knees, calves, feet on the couple of people on each side of me. Um, I could feel a lot of pain in my right arm. And um, I, they, I could see like a tube. It looked like a metal tube and they were inserting something into me. And then I had a lot of like very excruciating um, lower ab- abdomen pain, which um, I realized they were harvesting my eggs. They were taking eggs at the wow. time. During that session, during that memory, um, I could see a human doctor well, he had like a white lab coat on. That's why I assume he's a doctor or a scientist, perhaps. And the, I could see several grays. Um, there was a mantid there and then a, um, um, a reptilian walked in. Now, when the reptilian walked in, he was kind of sniffing. Like it looked like he was like kind of sniffing people. And he looked at me like we made eye contact. And I thought, "Uh uh-oh, like he knows, he knows something. And at that point, I believe when the grays were putting me back, and this was part of, Niall would um, 
point at the contract when I asked him about this. So when the Grays were returning me, as they left before I, re you know, before I uh, realized I was back or awoke or, you know, I never had any memory. Like I don't remember them. Oh, I'm home. Not like that, but later. Um, but before I woke up, the reptilians were snatching me as well and trying to find out more information of uh, what was happening. Now, I think this happens quite often. I think some of the reptilians are working for um, agencies um, with humans and helping them yeah. out uh, find finding things and because of the my lab incident with the black suv pulling up in the paranormal team's driveway and i've had several here and i've had some really weird incidences um like i was out one time with a friend having a drink and three people walked by me um the man that walked last, it was like a woman, a man and a man. And when the man walked by, he said, oh, Nikki, like that. And I went, <gasps> like, I looked at the guy I was with and I'm like, did you hear that? And he said, yeah, do you know him? And I said, I've never seen this guy before in my life. And I turned around and they were gone. And I've had so many little experiences like that. I've been run off the road, I or attempted to run off the road. I've had um, um, some near. I've had a lot of near misses. Let's say that um, I had a couple attacks by people, and I think in that in those cases, it was just that negative energy or um, some spirit trying to scare me from talking from helping people yeah. like you know they they want to scare you so that you just be quiet and live your life and don't do anything or say anything or move on so I I have had people I had this woman stop in front of my car driving home like I was turning so I was going very slow she was crossing the road she stopped so I couldn't go any further and glared at me like just that evil eye stare and the guy behind her was like, hey, like, what are you doing? Keep walking. And I, when she was staring at me, I looked back at her and I said, I'm not afraid of you. Like, I mouthed it to her because she couldn't hear me. And she uh -huh. moved on. It was like two nights later, I'm looking for a parking place in my neighborhood, same location, or about the same location. And I hear this bang on my uh, driver's door window. This man like pounded his fist on my driver's door window as I was looking for a parking place. And I was like, ah! you know, like completely startled. And he backed up with that same exact look in his eyes just two days after that woman had done it to me. And I was like, oh my God, I knew, I knew it was an energy that had like possessed that body or um, something just like the man walking through the bar, like they just do these things to try and throw you off your path and frighten you, but never, um, has anything happened. You know, I, I, if I feel like I can't get rid of it or if it's, um, possessing me in a dream, throwing me around in a dream or something, I call in God or, you know, who my creator, uh, Jesus. Archangel Michael, and it's always poof, they're gone. They don't want to mess with any of those beings. Um, so it, it, it's worked you know, so far. You know, the, the, the near misses really uh, make me think about uh, the reptilian part of you, which is, uh, is what's it is, is survival. And I just wonder if, the, if you could uh, voice the essence of your reptilian part. What is that? What is the reptilian? Reptilian part of you like, and what does it do for you? Um, I probably don't have to think much about that. <laughs> so the reptilian, um, I think, piece of me is just that kind of uh, badass, fearless kind of part. 
possibly. I mean, I think that um, I come from a long line of warrior type beings. Oh, I think uh, Janet mm-hmm. asked about that earlier. We can talk about that in a second. But um, yeah. there's up, the, you know, you're kind of, I, I call them spirit. So like we have our soul that that's whoever we're connected to, like our life force. We have a body that can be anything. We can be in any type of being or body or whatever but the spirit that's in us um that that i think is a combination of things right so um Mm -hmm. the spirits i you know just like spirits can be in the world like native american spirits or whatever they don't necessarily i'm not saying that they don't have souls but they don't necessarily have to have a soul they have a purpose they're here doing something and these spirits can you know attach to us and make us feel a certain way or do a certain thing, just what they're here doing. So if you have a spirit that's a little bit naughty and all of a sudden it attaches to you and you feel a little naughty, it's not that it changes who you are. It just kind of um, acts the way it it is, what it is. It's just a spirit. And it's doing what it's meant to do, be a little naughty or curious or whatever the case might be. So um, calming down about um, who some of these spirits are and attachments are kind of is helpful in not um, getting too excited and paranoid and freaked out by um, what's around us and what it's doing. So whenever I start feeling not so much like myself, I kind of like recenter myself and um, kind of push these things away. But if the essence of that reptilian um, is going to be a part of me, I feel like it's kind of the warrior piece of me, maybe, like where it's just kind of fearless, like it wants to stand its ground and and be who it needs to be. Like reptilians are Mm -hmm. here fighting because they feel like the earth is theirs. And maybe it is. Um, But we got put here also. Humans got put here also. Um, Mm -hmm. Not so much. You know, I think the Anunnaki played some part uh, with that, which I think you guys <laughs> know a lot about. So um, yeah. we don't, you know, we're here too. We wow. have to learn t- to share. And um, I think that's just yeah. the, always this war that's going on here on Earth. Because everybody wants to yeah. claim it and not understand the next being. And I think maybe that's why we're here now. Like. There's no choice. The earth has always been at war. Religion, race, species. It, it just it really doesn't matter. Just the, the bottom line is love and compassion, understanding, kindness. It's, it's the bottom line. That's if you don't like what I'm line, doing, right? that's fine. You don't have to. Just step over there or I'll step over here and you know and do your own thing there and I'll do my thing here. And we don't have to hate each other. We just... We have to accept each other. That's it. Uh, yeah, and that uh, seems to me, you know, as you've to- told your story, uh, the way you've dealt with this is with equanimity. You just accept it, even though, uh, and, and so you don't drive yourself crazy. And uh, Janet does the same thing. And that's what I get from you. Just you are, are able to navigate life because you just accept what's happening. Yeah, and, you know, honestly, it hasn't always been that way i there's been times where i got caught up and got really um like oh like what is happening i'm so tired of something new happening and um dealing with this paranormal paranormal stuff and um but it's so much easier to deal with when you can just accept it and calm so i mean it didn't come overnight and you know it almost seems like i was really accepting very young And then somewhere in the middle, I got a little off and now I'm back to like just understanding and accepting it. So the faster you can uh, relearn those um, emotions and experiences, I think the better off you are. Um, It doesn't, uh, even the trickster energy, I didn't like it here, but it was just doing what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to create chaos. And it was doing a great job of it. It was, you know, it was just here. Have you so? Have you been in long-term relationships, and how did they? How did that affect your relationships? How did you? 
partners deal with um, that? The, I, honestly, I haven't been in a lot of long-term relationships. I've been um, married a couple of times, um, but under 10 years each. Um, this, my second husband was earlier on, so I haven't been, um, married for quite some time now, but, um, he, in the beginning, he said, admittedly, I never believed in ghosts or things like that until I lived with you. And then you right. can't not <laughs> believe it because it ends up being pushed into your face. There's just no explanation. And I'm like, right. <laughs> so um, the people that are around me, um, they just come to realize that maybe there is something else out there because there is no explanation for the things that happen. Um, most right. of my friends don't have any of the experiences I have, and maybe some of them have a few of the experiences or similar experiences. But... Um, I'm the only, well, I'm not the only one I know, but um, I'm one of the few that have as many experiences as I do. Um, I, uh, for example, in one house that I lived in, just one house, three years, we had uh, in that house, I would get knocks on the windows and nobody was there. Some entity or something would turn on my spigots outside full blast so my water in the middle of the night I could you know like what is that noise the water would be going oh, wow. full blast out of the spigots they would try to ignite all four of my um, burners on my gas range my stovetop oh, oh, at the exact same time good. without anything yeah no they would swing chandeliers they would open and slam doors um, that was when uh, my son was a teenager at that time. And that's when he finally became a believer because my daughter and I always experienced this stuff, but he never wanted to admit it until then. Then he's like, okay, I have to admit it now myself. Do you think like, the, house, the house may have had entities or they're following Nikki. Well, it could be a combination. Once you're there, they're going, yeah, she's here. She's See, they, they tell me, um, I go, why me? You know, they say, well, because we can see you seeing us. That's why we come yeah. and get your attention. Yeah, I think it's different ones. There might be a handful or, I don't know, there might be some that follow. Um, I kind of <laughs> think it's fans. just different ones that, yeah, they're just like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> um, my granddaughter, when she was a baby, she saw in that house, she saw them. She was like barely able to stand up in her crib and we would hear her on the um, baby monitor laughing. And then, so we'd go and check on her and you could watch her standing in her crib. You could watch her eyes like following something all the way around her room. And then when it got right in front of her, she burst out laughing and um, she'd do that for hours uh, at several times. Yeah, um, she did that. So they seem to like the baby. I, it didn't seem like it was trying to harm anyone. Although one time it did um, slam the door and lock her inside um, the room. And my daughter like freaked out so bad she ripped all the trim off the door in order to get into the room, which I don't blame her. I would have done the same thing. Um, and then um, it was time to move. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't know about paranormal teams at the time. And uh, I was kind of getting used to like um, energies and spirits being around me. But I didn't, at that time, I didn't know how to deal with them or um, calm them down or communicate so much. I would try to talk to them at times and it kind of seemed to work, but um, I wasn't very good at it yet i was just starting to meditate and just starting to um communicate with my guides and uh so from there i learned a lot and started learning to deal with things but um i think there's been a mix of human activity and alien activity and 
spirit activity. So then it became like figuring out what was what. And now I'm pretty good at feeling it out. Like it feels very differently. So just like anything, the more you practice, the more you put time and energy into it, the better you're going to be at it. Um, some people have natural ability, some don't, but all have ability. So it's just how much you want to work at it and figure it out. And trust, trust, I guess, is one of the biggest things, right? Because um, everyone wants that confirmation. Um, but once you start trusting what you're getting, man, you just like really can excel at reading these energies and figuring out what they are and what they want. Um, I would like to tell you about an experience I had in astral because it's really beautiful and um, it was one of my favorite things that have happened so far. So um, a friend of mine, this was when I was first. Yes? Go ahead. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That was one of my first experiences with, um, I had been going into astral, but I never realized that's what people were talking about. I had just always been doing it. So um, I didn't realize until later what I was doing, but a friend of mine had asked about um, a, her daughter's friend who used to be really sweet and now was like really acting up. And she asked me if I could just take a peek um, and see if there was something going on with her. Well, um, I don't like doing things without permission. I feel like you're invading, being invasive. So um, she ended up asking her mother and the mother agreed. Luckily she was open-minded and um, she agreed to it. So when I looked at her, I saw like what looked like a serpent kind of energy going around and around her. And it was almost like smirking at me. So um, I asked the angels to come in and help me um, get rid of this because I, at the time, didn't know how to do it myself. So I asked them to come in. So this was my real first, almost like healing, kind of paranormal, getting rid of something paranormal. So what happened was um, it appeared that we went to the void. It was just all darkness all around us. And this girl was placed in front of me. So I thought about her and there she was standing in front of me and I could see this like snake serpent like thing going around her and in and out of her. And um, it was what was causing her to be angry and act out and things like this. So in came a thousand, I where it was a thousand angels and they lined up with me in a like straight line on each side of me. And then Archangel Michael came in and I saw Archangel Raphael off to the side and Archangel Michael stood between me and the girl and just stood there and stared at me. And at the time I was like, why isn't he getting rid of that thing? And then I'm like, Oh, that's right. You have to ask permission or you have to ask them to do things with angels. They need direct you know, uh, they, you have to ask them to do things. They won't just do it on their own. So I said, oh, Archangel Michael, will you please remove this energy from this poor girl? And like very showy, it took him nothing at all. He took out his sword and whoosh, 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 like swiped a couple of times and that thing was released from that girl's body. A couple of angels ran in and like grabbed the girl before she fell to the ground and me and the angels that were all lined up blew with our breath, you know, and pushed that entity or that little energy thing out somewhere into the universe. We just blew it like it just tumbled over and over and over out into the distance somewhere far, far away from this girl. And then Archangel Michael took off and Archangel Raphael stepped in again and communicated with me. She would be very tired and was going to sleep for a few hours. And then over the course of the next month, she would start to regain her strength and get stronger. And he said him and the angels would take care of it. I was done. And just like that, one by one, the angels alongside me just took off and I could feel the air and the energy from their wings like taking off. And it was 
so incredibly beautiful. It was so amazing. I like couldn't believe it. So a couple days after we asked the mother what happened when the daughter came home from school that day. And she's like, oh, it was really weird. She went straight to bed. She didn't even want to eat dinner. She just went straight to bed and wanted to take a nap and slept the whole night, just like they had told me. So it was such an incredible experience. Like I was so like, I want to help other people. What else can I do? I, I need to help other people. So I do it where I can. And uh, I always move in and um, I ask other people, you know, if I, uh, I, if I don't feel like I can do it, I always ask for help. Um, I did just have another experience that wasn't so pleasant. Um, a friend of mine was talking to me about a paranormal activity that was going on in her sister-in-law's house. And, um, it was really heavy duty. Like, she's like, I don't know. I tried to remove it and it didn't go. Like she was asking me what I saw. So we were talking about it and, um, her sister-in-law said, I don't want, you're going to, you guys are going to remove my protector. This thing had attached to her sister-in-law, making her sister-in-law very angry. And the sister-in-law kind of like broke out and she's like, I don't want, there's two, I dreamt there was two women all in white flowy dresses that came in and removed my, removed my protection. And I, I, I don't like it. I don't want it removed. So um, my friend explained to her what was going to happen. And indeed, that's what it was. This entity did not want to go. It was very strong and very persistent. So um, my friend called in Archangel Michael and asked for assistance with it. Well, when her and I hung up the phone, she was going to go and do it herself. I was actually at work. When we hung up the phone um, from that conversation, I needed to make a couple of calls. Every time I picked up my phone, it would ring like half a ring. And then, can I swear on this radio station? Uh, don't the F-bomb, but anything but the F-bomb. Okay, yeah. No, it's not that. So it was like this man's voice. It almost sounded kind of recorded, but like robotic, I guess is a better word. And it said, bitch, 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 bitch. Like just constantly, like, like repetitively saying that. I hung up the phone. I'm like, what was that? You know, I, I knew like, in the, you know, the back of my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, it was that energy. It's mad because we're going to get rid of it. And I picked up the phone again. It happened again. Again, I like shut my phone off, turned it back on. It kept happening. So I had to call in. I called in the angels and I'm like, can you please clear my phone, clear this energy away from my space and, um, you know, protect me from this energy. And I shut my phone off a second time, turned it back on and it was gone. So that was a, a little bit different situation, but just amazing and how powerful um, these energies are around us. I mean, there's everything you can think of out there. I know everyone's had an experience and whether they want to admit it or not, you know, everyone's had this either little miracle or this really strange thing they can't explain. And it is what it is. And if they just accept it and start dealing with, you know, the different forms of what's out there, um, it would be a lot easier to understand what's happening. And have faith in have your you angels. Have you ever channeled anybody? <laughs> have you ever um, have you ever channeled? Um, I have. I don't love. I, I guess it depends on how you, uh, what you mean by channeling. I channel information um, in reading. Um, I don't love letting beings talk through me. I'm not a big fan right. of allowing that to happen, um, but I will uh, read and uh, repeat what I get. Um, I have mm -hmm. a Palladian came through one time and um, just kind of channeled through me. She kind of caught me off guard and 
um, it was just a lovely message and it wasn't, you know, anything uh, too life changing, but it was a nice message. And I allowed her to do it because it didn't feel prickly to me. It didn't feel evasive to me. So I allowed it to happen, but um, I don't love doing that personally. Yeah. I, I had the one come through me. I had a client and he didn't know why his mother killed herself. So she tapped my shoulder and and I said, I've never did this before. She wants to say something. So we put up the protection. We said, okay, you can come and talk. And then we had to leave and catch a plane. <laughs> and I got home and I felt like I had the flu. And then um, and Sasha facilitated me. And she said, you, you didn't uh, ask me to leave. So I followed you all the way to Maui. And so when we asked her to go, you know, on an engine light or however you assemble it, um, all of a sudden I could see the entire tri-state area of, of Pittsburgh, you know, Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, like I saw, it must have been thousands rising up in the air and going with her. It's like somehow she was keeping all these people with her. And I oh, had wow. asked my sister, did you ever hear anything like that? She said, because uh, it seemed like the population was too big for, you know, what we know of you know, was supposed to be in North It seemed like millions. And, and she's a Mormon, converted Mormon. She said, oh, yeah. We have stories of all these ancient cities and there were, you know, huge cities like New York. So it was very interesting. But we only have three more minutes. Um, Flash, what do you want to say? Oh, just you know, a standard procedure uh, when I work is, is I interview the uh, the uh, possessing spirit and uh, uh, and uh, find out uh, when they're why they are associated with you. Then ask uh, um, Archangel Michael and the spirits of uh, rescue spirits to put a net of light around not just the uh, uh, spirit that's attaching, but all its associates that run through your family and through your friends and through your networks and let them all go uh, to their appointed place in their particular light. Uh, and, and so, and so that the, I've had that same experience of people. Oh my gosh, this whole network of has lifted for me and my family and everybody in the town. Okay. We have two minutes and you said you're going to, start working with the paranormal team how can people reach you um last two minutes are yours take it away oh um yeah so that's kind of in slow motion right now but i'm more than happy to um take a look at people and connect with um some friends that uh, do it on more of a regular basis of getting rid of energies and entities so i'm on facebook under my name and um, in the process of getting some, hopefully a book and uh, maybe a website together. But um, uh, through Facebook is the best way to reach me right now. And if I can't do it, I will definitely connect you with the people that can. Cool. Okay, great. Yeah, because uh, if you get a website or you have information, just send it to me. And I'll add it to your page. I can add it. I used to get a lot of hits on my uh, website. So we'll help you uh, connect with people who need your services. And I want to meet you. Are you going to okay. be doing any conferences in 2020? I have um, no plans on doing um, any right at this moment. I uh, am quite busy with, uh, I make some organic lotion on the side, which I really enjoy doing. And that kind of takes off sometimes. And uh, I work, you know, uh, uh, a money-making job <laughs> um, also. So uh, I'm pretty busy, but um, I would love to talk at a conference sometime. Um, I just don't have any plans on doing it at the moment. Okay, we're out of time. Thank you so much, Nikki. It was great. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Awesome. Lots of love and blessings, everybody.